Lowering your cholesterol is such an important topic. So many people are searching online for this, and maybe you're here because you were doing that. So I'm hoping I can give you some quick tips in a short video. It's all backed up by blogs that are on my website, rxlphabits.com, a lot of information there. So if I go a little bit superficial, it's all on my blog. So here's why I think I have some credibility on this topic. I just got off my bike, so uh, now it's time to put on my Rx Healthy Habits hat. There we go. Uh, I'm a pharmacist. I've also had high cholesterol, uh, and I'm still considered borderline cholesterol, high cholesterol, but not enough to treat because I don't have other risk factors anymore. And because of what I did, I'm gonna talk about that in a second. So. I want to go through, and, and here's a disclaimer to the whole thing. You could do everything you can to try to lower your cholesterol with some of these things I'm going to talk about. It still might be high because you have a predisposition called familial hypercholestemia. It's a genetic thing that your body's going to produce more cholesterol than normal than maybe somebody else would or most patients that don't have this genetic predisposition. So don't sweat it. But even if you do have that and you go on drug therapy, it's still important that you try to maintain some uh, of these uh, health things that I'm going to talk about, these steps to lower your cholesterol. So number one, healthier diet. Probably the mainstay of any talk you're going to have on lowering cholesterol is what you're eating. And you really got to start to take a look at your saturated fat, polyunsaturated fat intake, you know, your baked goods, your your meats, are they lean cuts, are they fatty cuts? Uh, what? How many times uh, a week do you eat red meat? Are you eating a lot of whole foods? Yeah, are you eating things like uh, fruits, vegetables, beans, some of the, the you know the uh, grains? Lower the bad cholesterol levels, and fiber can do that. So there's so many things. But really take a look at what you're eating, because I tell you what, probably that's where most of the problems are. And if you're overweight or obese, typically uh, some of the things you're eating that have led to that, you can kill two birds with one stone, because uh, if you can get that your weight down, then that's going to take care of some of that, because your eating's going to change. But anyway, that's number one diet. Probably the most important thing. I could talk about it, I could talk all day, but I'm not gonna. Number two, regular exercise. See the bike behind me? This was something when I decided to do something about my cholesterol, I had to add exercise to my routine and a lot more than I was doing. They're talking about, you know, 30 minutes of moderate intensity exercise per week. You know, I'm sorry, 30 minutes of uh, moderate exercise, moderate intensity, uh, at least three or four times, sometimes five times a week, 150 minutes is a starting point. Uh, today, I got three and a half hours in between the bike and hiking. That's not normal for me. Normally it's an hour, but here's the thing. One hour times five is 300 minutes. Now, not saying how great I am. I worked up to it. Here's the point. This is the only way I can get my numbers down because my HDL had to go up, my LDL had to come down. My ratio had to get better and I could do that by raising the HDL with exercise. So very important. Number three, maintain healthy weight. Here's the thing. Uh, I was on high cholesterol medications for several years because I was 25% uh, over what I should have been for my normal uh, body weight. I was at a BMI of 30, which is considered obese. I lost 25% of my body uh, weight. The doctor took me off statins. After she checked it uh, for three or six months, she says, okay, I think I'm gonna try to take you off these now. Took me off blood pressure, took me off uh, heartburn medication. But again, with the doctor's guidance and it took some time for her to do that and then she said i want to see you every six months to check this even today i'm right on the edge but no other risk factor so she's not treating me but she says be a good boy so maintain healthy weight you got to get down to a normal weight check your bmi it should be between say 24.5 and 26 27 if it's up near 30 it's considered obesity so smoking i knew this one but i never really understood just how severe it is because a really big impact on the cholesterol ldl it really can have some increase in ldl which is bad and a decrease in hdl but you'll see immediate improvements when you quit smoking that's that's what goes without saying but it's still something we got to say right uh, managing stress. The more and more we're finding out about stress and what it does to the body, the more I'm amazed as a pharmacist, because we hear a lot about this in pharmacy school, but oh my gosh, for so many disease states. But stress, this is a key thing that a lot of people are focusing on right now, and it's really making a huge difference in their health. So number five, holistic approach is managing stress. Now, here we go. You've done all these things. You go to your doctor, he's like, look, you know, you got some other risk factors. I think we're going to put you on something. Don't fear because there's some good medications out there that are highly effective. Uh, the trouble is most people say, I want to eat whatever I want to eat. And I'm going to take a statin, which is the first medication. Uh, I want to take a statin and not worry about, you know, having donuts or ice cream or all that other stuff. I just want to have a normal diet, normal diet, right? Statins, they work by blocking an enzyme in the liver responsible for producing cholesterol. Highly effective. They lower LDL cholesterols. They can raise HDL cholesterol. They can help with triglycerides. They do so much. And their studies have shown, long-term studies have shown, that they may have a 
76% reduction in cardiovascular uh, conditions. 76%. So there's some great studies out there about stents. Now you've heard everybody say, yeah, but they deplete your coenzyme Q10 and all this other stuff and they give you muscle aches or, you know, you can have some, some Ramdale myelosis. There's all these things that bring up. Listen, uh, in normal doses, typically most people don't have that. A higher doses is sometimes can kick in and the doctor can do something about that if it does. Number two is azetamibe. Azetamide works by blocking the absorption of cholesterol in the intestine and the small intestine especially. This, this is a good drug. Very few side effects. However, the efficacy is a little lower, but if somebody can't take statins, then they can give this one a try. Is it a good one? Absolutely. Will you get dramatic results, dramatic reductions like you get with statins? No. But it's safe and effective, you know, moderately effective. It might not be the workhorse you need. The wheel horse might be statins all the way up to the top. And the next one comes in. This is the PCSK9 inhibitors. They work, it's a newer class of drugs. They're injectables. They work by increasing the liver's ability to uh, remove LDL from the circulation. So that's huge. This is usually used third line in addition to statins where somebody's still up there and they shouldn't be. They have a lot of risk factors. They really want to drive the cholesterol way down, way below 100. And to do that, they had to hit them with some uh, heavy hitters. Now, this drug typically has not too many side effects, except it's an injection every two weeks, usually. Uh, there's another one, I think, that's once a month, but it's every two weeks. And sometimes flu-like symptoms can occur. Sometimes people say they feel a little yucky, but overall, just pain at the injection sites. So there you have it. There are some ways to lower your cholesterol. Here's the thing. You got to say to yourself, how badly do I want to get this under control? Because it's a silent killer. We used to talk about hypertension being that, but it's a silent killer. So... As always, if you want more information, come to our website, rxhealthyhabits.com. Again, the blog's great, and uh, I hope until the next video podcast, I want you to stay healthy, stay strong, and really find a way to lower your cholesterol number because in the long run, it's going to make a huge impact on your health. God bless.